to you before your passion, they sang their hymns of praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Dear Heavenly Father, on this day long ago, Jesus entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. With this action, Jesus claims the eternal crown of David and declares that he is the one whose coming the prophets predicted. Today, we ask you to bless our branches and the ones who bear them in his honor and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. We make our beginning this blessed Palm Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin not free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear saints, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Therefore go forth in his name, and sin no more. Amen. Amen. The intro it to be recited responsibly this morning from Psalm 31. Into your hands I commit my spirit. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Since you are my rock and my fortress, into your hands I commit my spirit. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. My times are in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Please be seated for a glory of him, number 441, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
Please rise for prayer. The Lord be with you. With you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. O oh Lord God, mercifully grant that we may follow the example of Jesus' great humility and patience and then be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with an offering from our bell choir. Bell Choir, well done. We continue with the Holy Scriptures. Today's Old Testament reading from the book of Isaiah, excuse me, Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humbled and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut up. And he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from river to the end of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, 
O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle lesson from Philippians. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a good thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being formed in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise for the reading of the gospel? Today from the book of Mark. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village in front of you, And immediately, as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. As those who went before them and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom coming of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of the gospel of our Lord. It is with all humbleness and by the power of the Holy Spirit we confess our Christian faith with an Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn number 531. Hail thou once despised Jesus.
grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this blessed Palm Sunday. Amen. Of Zechariah, Luther says this, The prophet lived after the Babylonian captivity, and with his colleague Haggai, he helped to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple and to bring the scattered people together again so that government and order might be set up in the land again. He is truly one of the most comforting of the prophets and presents many lovely and reassuring visions and gives many sweet and kindly words in order to encourage and strengthen the troubled and scattered people to proceed with the building and the government despite the great and varied resistance which they had till then encountered. Dear friends in Christ, our reading today from chapter 9 marks the shift in style as the apocalyptic writing gives way to the warnings of judgment on Israel's enemies. And of course, from our text today, the promise of the coming king. And on this Palm Sunday, all the messianic prophecies from the Old Testament come rushing forward as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. As I've shared with the pastors a couple weeks ago at the conference, it's Palm Sunday. It's always been Palm Sunday. But back in the 80s, the people in charge thought, well, not enough people come to Good Friday and not enough people know that Jesus died. So next week when we celebrate Easter, they won't know that he died. And I'm like, really? Really? By the way, I'm maybe a child of my Old Testament prophets from seminary because they were livid with this change. Why? Because all these prophecies, hundreds of prophecies through the Old Testament, it goes all the way back to Genesis 3.15. All the prophecies, they all come rushing forward to this point in time when Jesus rode into Jerusalem especially in St. Mark's uh, gospel, which we use today, that, you know, throughout Mark's gospel that we've had this spring, Mark's always saying, you know, Jesus will heal somebody, and once he tell them, but don't tell anybody. And it's maybe like reverse psychology, because what do they do? They immediately run out and run through the streets. He heal me, he heal me. And so, but now, the end is near. It's the beginning of Holy Week. And Jesus comes in and by this action declares, yes, I am the Messiah. The people know that. That's why they were shouting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, blessed is he. They knew, they knew that this was the Messiah. We'll talk about it a little later uh, on Good Friday, but but, you know, the, the thought was, well, boy, what a bunch of fickle people. They're, they're out there and they're blessing him on Sunday, on that Palm Sunday, and laying coats and, and palms in front of him. And, you know, shouting, blessed is he. And then by Good Friday, they're fickle. They're all yelling, crucify him. But it's a different group. It's a different group. Go back and review that. And, of course, You've got the crucifixion account. That's why it's called the Sunday of the pa- slash Sunday of the Passion. And of course, we have the traditional Palm Sunday. I think back in Advent, which I don't know who thought that one up. I get it. Yeah, the King's coming. But so, who is this King? Who is the King that we're singing about? He's Jesus Christ. He's the Messiah. He's prophesied by. Numerous prophets in the Old Testament and in the Psalms as well. We have, excuse me, as we will on on Station of the Cross on Friday, we have those responsive readings from Psalm 50, Psalm, sorry, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53. Who is he? He's the suffering servant, but he's the one whom nobody wants to look at. And, and we'll get into that more about that crucifixion and how bloody it was on Good Friday. But today, Zechariah predicting 
hundreds of years before your king will come. Notice in your text here, behold, behold. Old Testament prophets always said, and New Testament prophets too, whenever you see behold, and, and if you've got an English translation that doesn't have behold in the Greek for the New Testament, I do. It's like, hey, pay attention. It's all important, but God is now giving you an exclamation mark. Behold, your king is coming. But it didn't happen tomorrow, or the next day, or the next week, or the next year. It came hundreds of years later to show God's timing is certainly not our timing. John's gospel reminds us that he comes in the flesh, true God, true man. Zechariah reminds us, who is this king? He is righteous, the sinless son of God who comes with what? With salvation. There's no other person that can qualify for this. But also understand that during the time of Jesus, even the apostles got it wrong. Oh, the Messiah will come, and there was all these legends connected apart from the Scripture. Well, the Messiah, well, he's going to take the kingship of David, and David was a great general and a great king, so he'll be a military leader. But he'll also be a political leader, and we want the Messiah to come. We want to kick these crummy Romans out of Palestine, out of Judea. But that wasn't Jesus' point. That wasn't Jesus' point. John 18 reminds us, as Jesus himself reminds us, his kingdom is not of this world. Remember when he's before Pontius Pilate on Good Friday, you know, well, you're a king, well, it's what you say. But if I were a king of this world, my followers would fight for me. But my kingdom is not of this world. But his kingdom is established by the death of the king. Again, it's like we talked about in Advent and for the birth of Jesus. You know, God's sense of humor. Where, where's the Son of God born? Not in the royal palace and in Jerusalem and, and where, he should, where you would think the king of Israel, the king of the world would be born, but instead born in a stable in humble Bethlehem. But also the kingdom is established by the death of the king. You know, through, through the history of mankind, we've had lots of kings come and go and lots of kings die. I think in terms of, I think it's Louis XVI of France and, and, and he was a poor ruler. Well, he wasn't a poor ruler in money-wise, but he spent everybody's money. And the people were starving to death. And they overthrew King Louis and his queen Marie Antoinette and they had an inglorious ending. They took them out to the guillotine and whacked off their head. One would guess that Marie Antoinette wanted to check her hair before that, but just saying. But Luke also reminds us it's a kingdom that lasts forever. Jesus Christ, God's Messiah, God's King, God's Son. And Zechariah predicts that coming as do hundreds of other prophecies in the Old Testament, that this is the Messiah, the chosen one of God. <clears throat> Remember John the Baptist at the beginning of Advent. What's John do? He proclaims the coming one. Technically, John the Baptist is technically the last Old Testament prophet because he predicts Jesus will be there, even though he's his cousin. But on this Palm Sunday, as we approach Monday Thursday and the institution of the Lord's Supper, as we approach Good Friday and the passion and death of Jesus Christ upon that cross, that horrible murder, that Jesus Christ on this day finally publicly comes in. You know, on, for hundreds of years, but well, why ride on a donkey? Go back and, and review your Old Testament or go back and First, second Samuel, and read, what did David do? David was at Hebron, and then they captured Jerusalem and made that the capital. And that's an interesting story in and of itself. But then what did David do? 
He didn't ride in and with a big chariot and all the army and everybody behind him, as you'd expect the Roman emperor would do. You know, they had huge parades and <clears throat> armies and all these stuff. And and sometimes, like in Julius Caesar's case, the the people that that he had conquered, their leaders were were paraded before the people. But David rode in on a donkey. Why? To show he was God's servant, to show his meekness and his humbleness. How did he become king? Through God's grace and God's intervention. You know, think of Samuel. He comes and picks David out as when David was but a kid, a shepherd boy, there in Bethlehem. But Jesus Christ, from the line of David, is our king, our Savior, and our Lord we're reminded from our catechism, what? That Christ rules with his almighty power over all creation, the kingdom of power. We're also reminded that Christ governs and protects, especially we, his church, the kingdom of grace, the church on earth. And finally, we know that Christ will lead his church to glory in heaven, the kingdom of glory the church in heaven. This is Jesus. This is Holy Week. And the thousands gathered, and and, and of course, we were blessed by our own palm carriers today as they came marching in to remind us this is Palm Sunday. This is the day that Jesus publicly declared, yes, I'm the Messiah. He didn't have to shout it from the rooftops The people did that for him. As they shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the shouts of the crowd on that Palm Sunday recognized that this man riding on the donkey was the son of David, the Messiah, the Christ. And of course, by by Thursday of this same week, his own disciple will betray him. And early on Friday morning, there is another crowd that is gathered, except this crowd cries for Jesus' crucifixion. But make no mistake, this is not the crowd that welcomed him on this Palm Sunday. This is the lackeys of the high priest in the temple who said, okay, you know, we see this in the Middle East still today where, okay, we're going to have a protest. Everybody get out here. That's what they did on Good Friday. Okay, we're going to get out here and there's going to be an election. You didn't know the Bible had an election. They did on Good Friday. Give us Jesus or give us Barabbas. What should we say? What should we do? They whispered probably among themselves, yell for Barabbas. And they did. And what should we do with Jesus? And they yelled again, crucify him. A different group, a different cry a different crowd, and how quickly the events of this Holy Week change. And in the midst of this earthly life, it is filled with the trials of life, and our gracious and loving Lord reminds us through it all, He is our only King. And Christ is truly our reason to rejoice and to celebrate on this Palm Sunday Isaiah 61 says we should do this. Rejoice, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. Yet, dear friends, we know what's at the end of the week for our king comes to die, as we sang in the sermon hymn. However, On this Palm Sunday, like Zion of old, may we declare, rejoice, and shout aloud because our King, our Savior has come and He has brought salvation and our forgiveness of sins with Him. Amen. Now may that peace of God which does transcend all human understanding Keep your hearts and your minds this day and all throughout this holy week. Amen.
We rise for prayer on the bottom of page four. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for our city, for Mayor David Holt, for the city council and for all city workers, as well as all who serve in our surrounding communities, that you would guard and protect them and guide them into all things which are well-pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. And dear Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine who are fighting for their lives and for their country. We especially pray for the women and children who are trapped in this war. We also pray for the people of Russia, that you would deliver them from the evil of their current leadership. And finally, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones in this war, that you will grant them your peace and your comfort. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the people of Israel and Gaza. We pray that you will grant protection and comfort to all the people, but especially to the women and children of this war. And we pray for your peace that can only come through faith in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all those within these lands that they may truly know your peace and your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and the minds of all. You know those who are sick and those who are shut in and those who stand in need of your care and comfort. But today we pray especially for Lon Keister, for Betty Mahan, for Bill Mahan, for Leonard Mahan, for Luke Stockstill, for Laura Poole, for Karen Rumsey, for Brandon Schroeder, for Ernesto Zambrano, for Frank Martin, for Tracy Lee Latour, for Jorge Lopez, for Damon Smith, for Maya McCright, for Janine Bryant, and for Susan Bellis. We pray your Spirit's comfort to be upon each of them, O Lord, that you would guard and protect them in the days and weeks ahead, and that if it be thy will, you would grant healing to the sick and comfort to the afflicted. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends in Christ, as you go forth this Palm Sunday, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with favor and give you his peace. We remain standing for the recessional hymn 525. Crown him with many crowns.
Any late announcements? Remember, oh, Ron has a late announcement. Yeah, of course. Late announcement. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion. Actually, not. Just us who are confused. Uh, on Thursday, we're not going to have Wednesday meal or Wednesday night. Instead, for Monday, Thursday, we will have a light dinner on Thursday. Some say 5.30, some say 6 o'clock, depending upon what you read. It doesn't really matter. It'll be ready at 5.30, so come and have some roll those stones away meatballs with spaghetti. That's oh. kind of our theme here this time. With okay. red sauce, of course. Yeah, very apropos. So uh, come for that. You're welcome to that. Pastor's going to have a short uh, Bible study based upon uh, uh, Monday, Thursday, so... Uh, come for that if you can. And it's, by the way, I, I forgot before I get in trouble. Easter breakfast uh, will be on Easter Sunday, of course. It's in your bulletin as to when. And uh, to this, sun, this Easter Sunday, uh, we are going to be having the donations go to our Lutheran Women's Missionary League, who uh, do a lot of uh, work uh, for the congregation. And this one, this this LDML, not the national one, but our, but our local LDML. Of course, it's also the fifth Sunday. It's also Might Sunday, so get you into your LWML thought process there. So come for Easter breakfast. We have plenty of food downstairs, scrambled eggs, pancakes, sausage, whatever else we can scrape up out of the fridge. <laughs> and also uh, Easter egg hunt next week, 930, so bring your young ones for that and uh, Hopefully it won't be as windy as it is today where the eggs could all blow away, but have a blessed day. Lois says it. Oh, Lois says it. Can you say something about the flowers that you Oh, yeah. If, if you have a really late order for Easter lilies and flowers, uh, the order forms are at both doors or just this one? This door right there. Ah, oh, it's right here. So grab that and order it quickly. Oh, yeah, we're, yep, good idea, Deborah. thank you. Have a blessed Palm Sunday and stay safe.